So just like any given car in any given state has a unique license plate number, every electron in any given atom has a unique license plate number composed of quantum numbers. So quantum numbers are simply the identification numbers for electrons in atoms. And each unique electron in any given atom has exactly four quantum numbers, which make it unique. So these four quantum numbers is like the ID badge of that unique electron. So let's look at these four quantum numbers. The first quantum number is called the principal quantum number N. So it's represented by the lowercase letter N. And this number begins with one and could be two, three, four, five. So N has to be a positive uh, whole number. Now, this quantum number, the principal quantum number, designates the shell level or the energy level in which the electron is located. The larger the n, the larger our size, or the larger the size of the atom, and the greater the energy. In other words, an electron found in n equals 1 is lower in energy than if an electron is found in n equals 2. So the higher the n, the greater the size of the atom, and the greater the energy level in which our electron is in. The second quantum number is known as the azimuthal quantum number, and it's represented by the lowercase cursive L. Now, this quantum number designates the subshell in which our electron is in. And the number of subshells, this letter N, depends on the principal quantum number. And it's given by the following equation, L equals N equals 1. In other words, if we know that our principal quantum number in which our electron is located is n equals 4, then our subshell is n minus 1, so 4 minus 1, l equals 3. And so let's look at some examples of our subshells. S is a subshell, P is a subshell, D is a subshell, F is a subshell, and so on. Now these, S and P and D, are the most familiar ones. These guys you should definitely know. Now, for example, S corresponds to L equals 0. When our quantum number is N equals 1, we get 1 minus 1, 0. So if our electron is found in with a principal quantum number of 1, that means it must be in subshell L equals 0, because L equals 1 minus 1 gives you 0. Likewise, P represents a subshell of L equals 1. D represents a subshell of L equals 2. F represents a subshell of L equals 3, and so on. Now, every subshell has a certain shape. In other words, every subshell has an orbital that has a certain shape. And the shape of the orbitals in any subshell represents the most probable location of our electrons. So shapes are based on mathematical probabilities where our electrons are located. So let's look at the shape of our S. S has a spherical shape. And what that basically means, what this shape means, is that our elect there's a 90% chance that our electron will be found within this sphere. In other words, if we know that our n is equal to 0, or actually n equals 1, n can't be 0. If n equals 1, that means our L equals 0, so that means our subshell must be S. And that means that if this was our proton, there is a 90% chance, 90% probability, that our electron is found within this sphere. Likewise, let's look at the p orbital. The p orbital has the following shape. And what this p orbital states is there is a 90% probability that our electron is found within this weird shape. Now, for this guy, n must be equal to 2 because if n equals to 2, our l will be 1. And we see that p has a subshell of 1. So this guy corresponds to n equals 1 and l equal, actually n equals 2 and l equals 1. Now let's look at the third quantum number. The third quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number. And this guy is designated by a lowercase m with a subscript l. So ml for magnetic quantum number. The magnetic quantum number designates the exact orbital in which our electron is in. Now recall that every subshell L has a certain amount of orbitals, right? When our n equals 1, 
they were talking about the s orbital or l equals zero subshell and this guy has only one orbital namely the s orbital if our principal quantum number n is two that means two minus one our l our second quantum number is one and that means there are three orbitals now these guys are the p orbitals remember there are three p orbitals there's one in the x direction so if we draw our x, y, z axis, our three-dimensional axis, that means our p orbital is in the x direction, our p, y orbital is in the y direction, and our p, z orbital is in the z direction. In other words, if we put all these guys together, we get three orbitals. And these guys are all perpendicular to each other. Why? Well, because these lines, the z and the x axis, the x and the y axis, and the z and the y axis are all perpendicular to each other. So all these three guys, px, py, and pz, must be perpendicular. Now our range for our magnetic quantum numbers can be derived using our L. Our range begins at minus L and goes to plus L. So our px begins at negative L. And since this guy represents L equals 1, that means our Px must be L minus 1 or minus 1. So our ML is minus 1. Now the next number after minus 1 is 0, right? We're adding increments of 1. And that means our Py must have an ML of equals 0. And our final number is plus L, so plus 1. <coughs> So our ML for PZ, the final orbital, is plus 1. Now let's look at the final quantum number. The final quantum number is known as the electron spin quantum number. And this guy is represented by also a lowercase m, but with a subscript s, s for spin. Now, every orbital can have a maximum of two electrons. And what the Pauli exclusion principle tells us is it states that any two electrons in any given atom can never have the same four quantum numbers. Remember, just like any car in any given state can only have one license plate, one unique license plate, any unique electron in any given atom will only have four quantum numbers unique to that electron. So that's what the Pauli exclusion principle tells us. And that means since any given orbital can have a maximum of two electrons, there are two possible spin numbers or quantum spin numbers, plus one half and minus one half. So I want to mention briefly two more important notes about quantum numbers. Now to find the total number of orbitals in any given shell level with any given principal quantum number, we simply take that principal quantum number and square it. So for n equals 1, there are 1 squared, so 1 orbital. And that makes sense because when n equals 1, l equals 0, and we have only the s orbital. For n equals 2, there are 2 squared, so 4 total orbitals. And that also makes sense because we have the s, px, py, and pz, a total of 4 orbitals. For n equals 3, there are 9 orbitals. For n equals 4, there are uh, 16 orbitals, and so on. Now one last thing I want to mention is, if we look at our periodic table, what each period represents is a new energy level, a new shell level. So period number one, all the elements have a shell level of one. In period two, all the elements have a shell level of two. In period three, all the elements have a shell level of four, and so on. So each guy, each row, each period represents a new energy level.